Uh, Oyster Catcher Club members, fellows, this evening we're going to be talking about risk and reward. I'm, I'm convinced that the whole of modern work is a lie. And, th and that's the start point. I started from a perspective, I work at Twitter and I, and I was observing people around me become dead-eyed and, and sort of weary with work. <laughs> and, and like, you know, the science of open plan offices, I mentioned before, is face-to-face -face interactions go down by 75% and emails go up by two thirds. The single thing that open plan offices always accomplish is that they end up making people hate their colleagues. Like, <laughs> And yet we've created this pyramid scale sales scheme where we're convinced the meetings we're not in are the ones where good shit happens. No, there's no good shit happening in any of the meetings. We've just, we've just got to slightly let go of the way we're working. What do you do to help your people um, create that kind of balance of risk and reward? We're always going to get hurdles and things at work. Um, but I just try and see the positive in each situation. Um, because we've got to be there anyway. You may, you know, unless you're a gazillionaire, we've all got to work. So we may as well just try and enjoy it. And I try and get a sense of fun in my team because I think if people are happy in work, then they're going to work a whole lot better. Um, the balance of kind of risk and reward for your people, but also the, the challenges that you face are, are hard, aren't they? We've tried to find clients who don't feel as though there is a kind of client here, an agency here. It's a team of people with the same goals and the same way of thinking about things. And then we have as informal and as um, regular a contact as possible. We're trying to be in touch, you know, see each other all the time and talk and, and kind of keep the, the relationship more informal and more iterative. And that's one way that you can manage the stress, just make it feel more collaborative in, a, in an informal way. Talk to me a bit about how you prepare and how that then links into business, because you, you've looked at that quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look. Preparation is key, making sure you've trained your brain to run through scenarios and find solutions in the intensity and the pressure of playing. People have a bit of fear about actually jumping off and going and, and, and trusting that they will have the skill set to be able to adapt to whatever challenges are thrown at them. Very lucky with the England rugby team that we spent a lot of time with the military and um, the, the special boat service and one of their mottos was the best battle plan in the world never survives the first contact with the enemy. But it's the team that adapts <laughs> quickest that yeah, survives. Yeah, yeah. So you can have the perfect strategy in place. It's not gonna it's not gonna work. Control the controllables, control the things that you can look after and adapt quickest and you'll win. Biggest moment of my career, 2003. Um, you know, I dropped a ball, lots of other people made a load of other mistakes. But we over four years had ingrained bulletproof belief that we knew every time they kicked a penalty we were under the post saying well we'll just go back down there and score. The, the most elevated forms of uh, work culture come from a combination of, of two things, positive affect which is sort of the positive mood um, and then psychological safety and I suspect very uh, evidently in a client uh, kind of agency relationship, when this psychological safety, when these, these the ability to speak candidly to each other, mm -hmm. I suspect the best, best relationships come from that. How do you enable clients to be brave and, and collaborate together to get great work? I guess, you know, one of the, the most important things you can do is to really understand the DNA of a brand, not bring your own preconceptions of it and not have an agency standpoint on what you know, this is how we do it. You've really got to have the humility and the curiosity to try to get under the skin of the DNA of a brand. And if you can do that, that provides an appropriate launch pad to do something brave and exciting. Risk and reward strategically and creatively. It's a kind of fundamental of your job, isn't it, Sherry? Well, I think everyone has to, the risk is just a way of life now. If no one ever took a risk, we actually wouldn't have any business, we wouldn't have anything. Well, first of all, I say, if we're going to be launching something new, if we don't feel slightly nervous, then we're probably going too safe and we haven't gone far enough. But what I don't want is people just to be sort of like crazy creative. You know, anyone can come up with like, you know, very risky, crazy things to do. But it has to be very, it has to be based on strategy and based on what the business wants to do. 89% of all advertising is completely ignored in the UK. Um, so you do have to take a risk to make sure you get noticed, but it's not so that someone says, what an amazing campaign, 
Who was it for? The really interesting thing is that actually if you look at where people have their creative ideas, they often have their creative ideas when they're in that sort of in-between daydreamy mode. Ideas live in the gaps between things. Everything I, I've discovered is common sense, but the old adage, beware the busy manager, is never more true. Uh, thank you all very, very much. Can we give another round? Thank you.